The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Look at this. Look at it! Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Looks good. Looks good. That's the goal. It's a goal. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Voting Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burke. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again here to Park Place Lanes here in Windham, New Hampshire, and our semifinal week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're happy to have you with us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. We reached the semifinals once again, and we're left with our top three seeded bowlers to battle it out for a spot in the Tournament of Champions. And uh, just like it happens most of the time now, we're still waiting for a double winner two weeks in a row, and Stan Mayo's going to try to do it. All right, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, our number three seed coming back to try and make that second win in a row from Windsor, Vermont, Stan Mayo. Okay, Stan comes in averaging 121, averaged a lot more than that last week at a big 400 triple, and uh, his roll-off score was 664. Yeah, in fact, last week Stan Mayo rolled a 409 to knock off Mike Sargent, who had a fine 387 in a losing cause. So Stan tries to make it two in a row today against our number two seed for his first appearance of the year from Ware, New Hampshire, Kevin Davis. Okay, and Kevin comes in averaging 123, high single at 201, his roll-off score 677. And, of course, a little bit later on today, we'll have our bonus ball contest. That'll be at the end of the show. That'll be worth $70. Now, the runner-up from this week's show will take home a check for $250. The winner this week, of course, will move into the finals next week for a chance at uh, the big money and also a spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. So we've got lots to attend to. We're going to get it started uh, very very quickly here with Stan Mayo and Kevin Davis first of three strings and we'll get it underway right after these messages don't go away All right, before we start our semifinal match, uh, look at what has happened to this point. Uh, our first week of this series, two weeks ago, Mike Sargent knocked off Dan Mitchell, a very close match. And then Dan, in turn, or rather Mike, in turn, was knocked off in a pretty close finish by Stan Mayo last week, went down to the final two boxes. Today, Stan Mayo and Kevin Davis, the number three and number two bowlers, and the winner of this one, the right to face Bob Mazur next week in the championship match. And, of course, Bob Mazur has a chance for... Uh, a double championship as he'll be uh, part of the number one seeded team on Stars and Strikes doubles next week as well. So here we go. Stan Mayo. Ouch. <laughs> oh, that looked pretty good going in. One, two pocket, but seven, eight, and ten left. Piece of wood. Let's see where that settles down. Maybe we have a shot at this. Well, going to have to go after the seven pin, I would assume, and see if we can snap it across. Waiting for the wood to settle. As you can tell from our tastefully decorated set, we want to wish everyone a very happy and safe and healthy holiday season. Glad you could uh, take time out from what undoubtedly will be a busy week for most people to uh, join us here on Stars and Strikes. And don't forget that uh, semifinal week continues at 5 o'clock this afternoon on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley will take on our returning winners, Steve Lavery and Roger Bowden. Makeable spare here for Stan. 3 9 10. Oh, he's got it. First mark of the day. Last week, Stan Mayo had a total of 17 marks in his win over. Mike Sargent with a 409. Here's Kevin Davis now. Oh, 
Kevin's last appearance was just a little over a year ago, back in October of 91. When he lost to Joe Willett, and there's a big spare in box number one. Four horsemen plus the nine. And then you see it go, played it on the right hand side of the head pin. And now the fill. Right in there. Solid nine drop, leaving the eight pin. Prior to that uh, appearance in October of 91, Kevin was here right around New Year's as he spares it up two in a row. Kevin was here uh, right around New Year's, 89 into 1990, paired with Carol Downey on mixed doubles, and they won four consecutive shows to win the series. Stan Mayo now on the mark, and it'll be seven. And the one, two, seven left. And he's got it, two in a row. One of those pins was off the spot a little bit, but Stan converts. Back on the head pin again, eight more. This time the five and the eight left. Oh, a tough break there with that wood turning. He can, he's got enough to get by the five pin, but he might want to clip some of the wood and have it come off the wall. No. Nope. Yes. He got by it. Nice shot. Three marks in a row for Stan Mayo. Picking up where, where he left off last week. Kevin Davis has bowled two frames and both marks, both spares, going for his third in a row. And it's going to be a difficult one. Two, four, six, ten left. No wood. Nope. And that pin will not count. In fact, may have two not counting here. Nope, it'll just be one. The ten pin went down. The curtain came back and knocked it down, so that will not count. So that'll be a seven. Seven box for Kevin Davis. Kevin works for Pepsi Cola, does most of his bowling at the Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, which coincidentally is where the final roll-off for this series was held. So Kevin had an opportunity to bowl at his home lanes, always a little more comfortable for the bowlers, I think. Uh, yeah, as a rule it is. Plus you got the hometown crowd in behind you. A lot of people will probably be watching the final roll-off. Well, interesting leaf. One, five, nine, ten. Interesting from our point to Kevin's probably not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, one pin is a little bit off the spot. It's a little bit off to the right. I don't know if that affected the shot or not, but it was not lined up directly in front of the five pin as it normally would be. So that'll be a nine box. And the early advantage for Stan Mayo. Now, last week he got off to a real fast start against Mike Sargent, throwing a 151, 153. Well, Look target. at this action. Look at this action. If it falls, it doesn't, but if that five pin had come forward, he might have had a strike. Ooh, pull oh, pull that one. My. Not too happy with himself there. That's what he had to do. All he had to do was touch it, and it was going to go, but wasn't able to convert for the spare. He does have the 11-pin lead early. $250 to the runner-up today. Oh, boy. Oh, there's a big strike. How about that after the... Missed spare. That could have been the fifth mark in a row for Stan Mayo. Now that always seems to happen too. I, mean, I, I know a lot of times when I'm bowling, if I miss an easy spare, I just say to myself, now watch, I'm going to drop eight or nine or a strike to make me feel real good about missing the spare of the box before. And I have an eight pin drop for Kevin. Five and the eight left. That pin will be well out of play, so Kevin won't have to worry about that. 
mentioned this last week, Kevin is the younger brother of Skip Davis, who has uh, appeared with us a few times. Five eight for the spare. Third mark for Kevin Davis. A little heavy on the five pin that time, but still carried the eight pin. And the fill right on the head pin, and look at this split. No leave or no wood rather. The two, the six, with no wood. Trying to try to cut the two on the left hand side. Mm. Good effort. And again, same spot. Kevin was going for it both times. So the lead is reduced to five, but it'll go back up again because Stan is working on a strike in the sixth. Oh, he's right in there again. Oh, oh my! Oh, boy. Probably should have been a double. The four pin hopped, but did not go over. Hopped and slid a little bit. Dan's got to wait this out. The wood is behind, the plane of the wood, as you can see right now, is behind the four pin, so it's not going to be a factor in the shot. He's got to go right at it, and he does. Well, like last week, Dan, you mentioned it. Stan's got a fine opening game working here. That one got away a little bit. Five fill on the spare, already at 107 in the seventh. See if he can turn this one. Well, just short pin. Pin fell into the channel there, just missing the seven. And that's a nine. 116 through eight. For Stan Mayo. Oh, yes, how about that? Was a triangle, and then all of a sudden, they all went. See the ball twisting and turning, wanting to break back to the right. Hits the 1-3 pocket, and triangle of 2-4-5 goes out of there for the strike, and I'd like to see the 5 pin go down, but it doesn't. But if he plays the 2 and the, f I mean the 4 and the 7, that wood could kick forward for the 5. Yes. Nice shot. Kevin Davis with a spare on strike, and the fill could very well tie this thing up. Yeah, it was frozen against the five, so when you hit the other end of it, it kicks forward and is able to clear the five out. That's five marks for each bowler already. Oh, Stan got a nice break there. It looked like it might have been a spread eagle. Still not much of a leave, but... Yeah, actually, probably is a little more difficult now because then have the seven pin up there where he could come forward if he undercuts the three pin, what he misses anyways. And it's an eight. 124 with a box to go. Oh, a light hit. How about the three, five, seven, and nine? One thirty two for Stan Mayo. Bad opening game. Kevin Davis has got a decent one going himself. 127 clip, but he's working on a spare.
Kevin has cut the deficit down to just three. And it will remain three going into the final frame. A reminder, uh, if you come here to visit Park Place Lanes to do your bowling right on Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire, be sure and stop into the Willow Tree Restaurant located right inside Park Place Lanes under the watchful eye of Rodney Cronin. Open early for breakfast all the way through the day and to dinner time at night. Great food. Terrific people, you'll enjoy it. Excellent food. If you're on a taping session, that's where the crew eats. So you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> One pin is the difference, Stan Mayo. In the lead, and we'll be back with game two, and also some details on how you can win our bonus ball contest in a minute. Valued at about $100 uh, per set. Kevin just missing the head pin to the right and leaves the 6, 9, 10 plus the four horsemen left. 1, 2, 4, 7. I don't know if this is something I've asked you on the air before. How much of a difference does it make for the average bowler to have their own set of bowling balls? Do you think that's something that. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because um, what happens is if you can relate throwing a. Uh, a softball and a golf ball. I mean, that's a little extreme, but a lot of your lane balls aren't the same weight. So when you get a set of personal balls, you're throwing the same weight all the time, so it certainly helps the timing. Kevin Davis looking at the five pin with wood all around it. Covers it for the spare. That is his sixth mark already. Stan Mayo also had five marks in the first game. Five marks apiece, and that's why it's so close. Only one pin advantage for Stan Mayo after one. Light hit that time, and let's see, with a nine pin go? Well, right now, it seems, at least for now here at Park Place, the, the lighter hit seems to be the, the way to go. It seems to keep the pins on the plate a little longer, and the mixing action knocks a few, uh, few more pins down. Spare in the first. Mike Sargent was talking about that last week when he was here. Oh, oh my. Well, we were joking with Stan. He did that last week in the last box after he had already won the match. He pinched out one pin on a spare fill. This time it really costs him. Watch out. Oh boy, goes right after the nine pin now. He's got the three pin and the nine pin gone. One ball left. And, uh, well, fair. On the out, looked like a little, would get a few more than that, but only 17 with a spare in the first. So Kevin Davis has taken over the lead and will increase it with this ball. What are the uh, parameters again for, uh, that may be in the rule book too, I should take the rule book out, the parameters for the weight of what, the, the height, bowling balls? Right, 27 is the uh, maximum legal weight, two pounds, seven ounces. There is no minimum weight. Hmm. Um, I don't know why anyone would want to throw a real light ball. They do <laughs> make a, a two-pounder hmm. you know, for young, young people, young kids, I guess. And the balls are four and a half inches in diameter, maximum circumference. And I can't talk and <laughs> score at the same time, as everyone knows at home by now. And again, there's no minimum size, but nice effort by Kevin. But you wouldn't want him too small. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a 41 through 4 for Kevin. Well, remember, uh, we've talked about this, I know, before, but it bears repeating that the, the maximum diameter is what, 4 and a half inches? Right. Remember that 
although it doesn't look it when you're standing up on the approach, there are 12 inches between each pin. That's right. Between every two pins, there are 12 inches of space. So two bowling balls plus will fit between them. For the spare, no. Stan looked like he slipped a little bit. And the head pin is still there for a nine box. Off to the right, four horsemen plus the nine pin. Well, to this point, at least, Kevin Davis has retaken the lead. Leading by seven in this game, by six in the match. We're just about at the halfway point. The semifinals here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back. Kevin Davis, Ware, New Hampshire. Comes up a little light on the head pin. He's a triangle, two, four, five, and then the seven pin, but a piece of wood that could help with the seven. Let's see. Yep, called it. Very nicely done. Almost threw the piece of wood in front of the seven. And now the fill. Spare in the fifth for Kevin. Trying to increase his lead. One two pocket this time and that close to a strike. And a difficult piece of wood. Yep. Almost have to cap it really. Play it at an angle. Nope. Any piece of the flat part of the wood was going to deflect it, and that's what happened. Ten box. Seventy through six. One of our participating sponsors for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Thanks to them and all the folks there for their continued support on Stars and Strikes, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Located right in Salem, New Hampshire. 610 for Stan. Oh, wow. Two pieces of wood and... I was already leaning over to mark that I one down was, on my score sheet. I went for the computer too, but that second piece of wood must have came in contact with the sidewall and kind of deadened it. And it's a nine box. Let's see what happened. Yep. Actually, that pin jumped in the air, too. When the ball came back on the plate, <laughs> pin jumped up. See, we could even have Candlepin bowling out in California. Even trimmers don't bother us. <laughs> they still <laughs> won't fall down. And of course, as you always say, yeah. miss spare, big drop. Nine right. <laughs> And another tough piece of wood. Not quite as bad as Kevin's, but he's still going to have to be the right of the red line. No. Hmm. Right on the red line. Before I forget, well, you know, we're pretty close to Christmas, Doug, and I get a note here from a fellow that you may or may not know. You probably... There's a clue in here, anyways, of, of who this gentleman is, but he writes, Dear Doug, and Christmas just around the corner... And I've, uh, let me see if I can see this, all right. I'm writing to you to see if you've written to Santa and asking for a new alarm clock. <laughs> I, I understand that you have a tough time getting up before noon without one. Here's hoping, and here's the clue now, here's hoping that your Christmas will be up to par. 
This also says, P.S. Dan Murphy does a great job on the show. Oh, yeah, you added that in. It oh, I did, that, I did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's signed by Jeff Keeler. Nine box for Kevin. There's a three-letter word there that may tip it off a little bit there. Well, it can only be something to do with golf. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Be probably at home wondering, well, we worried about Doug one day, and he worked Oh, late. big strike for Kevin Davis in the eighth. Let's take a look at that strike first. There it is. This goes the nine pin. Doug worked, at least he told me he worked very, very hard and went to bed very, very late, and we were supposed to play golf, and we worried that he got an accident or something, but <laughs> we found out. Don, Doug is very honest. Me, I would have lied. <laughs> and said my car broke down, but he said he overslept. <laughs> and so uh, Jeff was one of supposed to be one of the participants uh, in that golf match. So he wants a rematch now. Nice oh, shot. Great shot. Stan. The six and the seven, or rather the three and the seven with Wood. Either way, a tough shot. Off to the right. Five on the spare. Well, all that did, Dan, you should have thanked me for not coming, because all that did was speed up your round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just missing the head pin there for two marks in a row. Seventy-eight. Stan Mail having a tough string. The second one. Start off with a spare, but just fill it with one, and now a spare in the seventh with five on it. Seventy-eight through eight. Kevin Davis leading by ten plus the fill in the strike. Ooh, and he's right through the middle for the spread eagle. But remember, this is a strike fill. So if he can make something happen on this ball. Just five. So just when you thought that Kevin was going to uh, kind of take a little charge of this match, comes up with just a five, but that's a great out on the third ball with a ten. Boy, if he had thrown that one ball earlier, he might have had a spare. Hit that yeah. perfectly. And the pin was coming back in case he didn't get the three pin. 104 through nine. Carbon copy of the strike he threw in the eighth. That ball was just crossing over the one two pocket, but leaves a six, and he's got a favorable piece of wood coming. Yep. Spare in the tenth, 114 plus a ball. Another good hit. Eight fill, 122, and a 253 two game total for Kevin Davis. Well, this means that uh, Stan Mayo could, would have to mark twice big in order to get this thing under 10. Well, there's a nine drop. And he'll have the four pin for a spare. Oh, and he just slides by. Seems like since Stan chopped out that three pin on the fill in the first box, he has really hit the skids here. Trails now by 16 in the match. But of course, he's opposite a mark. Oh, my. One in five. How do you do? It's a good question. How do you do this? <laughs> well, there's always the reset button. <laughs> Inside and... Not a bad effort. That four pin way over, almost into the... Actually, it's partly off into the channel. That's how far it slid over. And that's a seven box, a 94 for Stan Mayo. And so Kevin Davis has taken the lead here in the match. There are the numbers. 
253 for Kevin Davis, 226 for Stan Mayo. Still one game to go to see who is going to the finals next week. We'll decide it after these words. Well, Stan Mayo is in a hole here as he goes to game number three, trailing by 27. Has to try and pull things back together here. Well, got the seven pin to go down, leaves him just a triangle, six, nine, ten. Certainly a makeable spare, but not an easy one. Let's see, no. And the 10 box. Stan last week had games of 153, 131, and 125, enrolling his 409 to beat Mike Sargent. Today he started with a 132, but then that eight, uh, 94 second game hurts him. But there's still time if he can string some marks together. This may be an interesting shot. The one and the nine. Oh, yes. Nicely done. Might have made that without the wood. I, th I think you're right. In fact, yep. no, I think it did didn't really use the wood. Well, Kevin Davis trying to protect now. It's 27 pin advantage. Ooh, a little short that time. Wants Dan, the ball break from right to left. Uh, Dan mentioned earlier, Kevin puts a lot of spin on that ball. He puts it down very close to the edge of the lane where it meets the channel. And he throws it so hard that it takes a little bit of the break out of the ball. It's moving so fast. Oh, boy. Mm. Now there goes five pins of his lead without the benefit of a mark for Stan Mayo. So the lead is reduced to 22, and now he's opposite of spare. time he just got a bit of the head pin on the way by and he's got a spare leaf for himself the two and the five with wood kind of aim right for that V made by the two pieces of wood and there you are well, matches the spare put in the second put up by Stan Mayo and Stan now will fill his trailing by 22 still certainly within striking distance eight frames remaining Bob Mazer will be in next week championship week and one of these two bowlers or possibly Bob Mazer will enter into the Tournament of Champions along with Paul Berger and Peter Flynn oh and boy. again second time in this game the triangle Stan has been victimized by that triangle same pin each time the left side pin of the triangle last time it was the nine pin this time the four and you see 37 through three very easily could have had three marks Let's see. Oh, that would have been something. The nine pin's still up there, though. And a 10. So two 10s for Stan, but that's not what he needs. Trailing by more than 20. Well, Kevin Davis will be hoping to get back to form on lane 32 after that five box last time he came up. This time he's on the head pin, and wouldn't you know it, a three punch out. Looks like he overcorrected that time. He said, I'm not going to leave this one short. I'm going to hit the head pin he did and drove it right straight back, so it's only three. He has to be careful he's not backing up to Stan as opposed to Stan coming after and catching him. And maybe, yes. How about that for a 10? 
So Stan picks up a few more. It's down to 18 now. And you see the replay all the way across the left side wall and back for the 9 and then the 10. And short again. But not, not too bad. No, not too bad. I was going to say he didn't want the head pin to fall down, but the wood looks pretty favorable. Now, the further away it gets, the worse it gets, because now that other, the third piece is settling in there, and that doesn't have a real good angle. Try just a sweep from the left side of the lane. That's what he's trying for. Nope. Too far left. He didn't really hit it where he wanted to, I'm sure. He wanted to drive everything from left to right. So he'll probably lose another in count unless he can take both of these. Just a nine, so... Stan Mayo picking up some ground here. Six boxes to go. The lead is 17 as we move closer to the big day. You're on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. All right, Stan Mayo with six frames to go, and he's got room. Trails by 17. Light hit, let's see. I don't think he wants that one to fall, <laughs> unless it takes a few more with him. Five, uh, three, five, six, nine, ten. Problem here probably will be the nine pin. Oh, takes it. And the five pin actually was the last to go out. Important mark for Stan Mayo. He's uh, well, the visiting team here in this match, bowling first, so he's got to post the marks to try and come from behind. And there is an eight fill. Not the leave he would have wanted, but he did take extra pins on the fill. Well, the pin closest to him is the two pin. I think you're going to have to go after that one, and hopefully he can cut it on one side or the other and take some of that wood. And oh, he does. yes. Terrific shot for Stan Mayo. All he could do, as you said, Dan, was hit it and hope. Actually, the two pin, I think, comes back. Yes, two pin comes back. Hits the second piece of wood for the ten pin. Each bowler now with ten marks in the match. And again, Kevin Davis is short to the right. Four horsemen plus that triangle, six, nine, ten in the right-hand corner. And that close, leaves just the two. So he'll drop at least more, eight more of the lead, possibly nine if he misses this one. 10 bucks, so the lead is now down to nine, but he's opposite a spare. Oh, oh big boy. strike. Well, he corrected whatever problem he was having that time, oh, came almost, right in the pocket. Almost looked like he was going to drive it through the middle again, but this time he got some good action coming back for the strike. Crossed over to the Brooklyn side for that one. Stan Mayo filling the spare in the sixth. Six, four horsemen right, one, two, six, ten. I would really like to just keep marking. No. no. To 10. 91 through 7. <coughs> well, that piece of wood's probably going to be in play. Appears that part of it is hanging over the plate, so. I think it's going to roll out, anyways. Well, just because I said that, put the brakes on, it's going <laughs> to come back. It's definitely in play, though. This is a real difficult shot, the three, the five, and the nine, because if you have to hit a full for the nine, you might leave the five. He's going to play the wood and didn't get any kick off the, off the wood at all. Drove the wood straight back. The ball fouled it and missed the three pin. And it's a nine box, and even 100 through eight. So now Stan has to hope that Kevin Davis doesn't add any more marks because the lead will already be in double figures with the fill of this strike. Thank you. 
Oh, 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 there's a big one. That's a huge one because it's two strikes in a row. Looks like the five pin, and eventually something comes from behind and knocks the five down. This is a huge ball right here. Seven more. Two, four, seven left. He's going to leave a tiny, tiny opening for Stan, but not much of one. He's going to have to get up and throw some strikes. So the lead now 28 as Kevin has regained all that he lost and another one on top of that. So Stan will really have to throw some strikes. That was good enough to be one. Well, I'll have to pick this one up and still throw some strikes. Air in the ninth. Well, if he were to throw a double strike here, that would force Kevin to mark. Nope. Oh, great shot. That's a terrific shot. The one, three, seven, and eight. Splits the one and the three, head pin goes down, clears out the seven and the eight. You would have made that without wood, too. That's 12 marks for Stan. And it'll be a seven fill, a one 33, and a three string total 359. But I dare say it's not gonna be quite enough. Well, Kevin just has to keep one ball on the lane. That'll be about it. Mm, well, I that's was going to say tie. that'll do it, but that's a tie. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to keep two balls on the lane. That makes Kevin Davis a winner. So it will be Kevin Davis and Bob Mazur next week for the spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And Kevin can bowl this 10th frame for fun. Once again, a bowler is thwarted, winning two in a row. This is the five pin. No. If you're going to miss one, now's the time to miss it. Doesn't mean <laughs> anything. Takes it for the 10, a 121. 374 for Kevin Davis over Stan Mayo's 359. There are the numbers. We'll be back to set you up for next week's championship final, tell you about today's Stars and Strikes doubles at 5 o'clock, and talk to the bowlers all coming up after these messages. We're back, and Kevin Davis has advanced into the championship match next week against Bob Mazur. Uh, again, third week in a row. We've had to kind of wait it out to the last few boxes before the bowlers finally decided it. Yeah, it was pretty tight going all the way down the stretch until Kevin threw the double strike. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk to both bowlers. Uh, get a quick comment as we're running a little bit short on time, but let's have a round of applause for Stan Mayo. And... Uh, I hold in my hand the uh, third place check for $250. Congratulations, Thank Stan. You. Slide right in here so we can get a good look at you. And uh, well, it was it was certainly in doubt, as uh, as Dan said, right up until that uh, that double strike probably at the end. Yeah, the double strike kind of took me out of it. <laughs> oh, you don't bowl many 94 games to beat these kind of bowlers. Uh, yeah, and and, <laughs> and actually, even at that, uh, you had a chance to take a run at him, but uh, just not quite enough. Uh, not quite enough marks for you today. And my strike streak ended. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> well, you said it would come and go, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate your being here. Congratulations, and uh, thanks very much for coming. Nice Thank job. You. Great job last week, particularly on the 409. All right, Kevin Davis. Let's uh, have our winner throw our bonus ball here and uh, see if we can't get 
somebody a check for seventy dollars cash. Oh well, this is looking better now. A seven. Let's see. I don't know if we would have had a winner with a four, but uh, a seven's got a shot at it. I would say. A winner, John. It's got to be a name with a lot of consonants in it, though. In it, though. John Pierzynski, I believe it is, from Lowell, Mass. John Pierzynski, guest of seven. You're right on, John. It'll be $70 in cash for you, a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries. And Mr. Davis will be getting a brand new set of bowling balls as well. And uh, maybe you can use them next week because you'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying much. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. That, uh, we, we talked during the show that this, this really is the first win you've had in singles. So this yeah. is going to be a little special for you. Yeah, it helps. Gets yeah. a little confidence now going in the finals. Uh, nice to have that double, too, in the third game. Yeah, that was the only thing that saved me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the lead was kind of uh, dwindling a little yeah. bit. Yeah, iffy, real big. And I, I'm assume you're, I assume you're probably familiar with Bob Mazur. You'll be bowling yeah. him next week. Yeah, I bowled with him plenty of times. All right, all right. he's a great candlepin bowler. We'll be looking for a terrific match. Uh, rest up, and we'll see you then. I hope so. All right, thanks. Kevin, thanks very much. Congratulations. And uh, let's set it up for you now for next week. Um, Championship week will start at 12 noon here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It'll be Kevin Davis, our number two seed, and Bob Mazur, our number one seed. And uh, Kevin, I think, knows what, what is in store next week. Bob has been here many, many times and uh, is hungry. He was a little disappointed uh, what happened the last time he was here, and he's ready to try and uh, get this win. Yeah, and he'll be in the uh, doubles final as well, and it uh, should be interesting uh, to see if he can capture two titles. Well, don't forget, there's more bowling coming up here on the wins later today at 5 o'clock after our movie double double feature at five it's stars and strikes doubles we'll have our semi-final match there and don't forget championship week starts next sunday here on stars and strikes beginning at 12 noon until then for dan murphy and the whole crew i'm doug brown have a good afternoon everybody <laughs>